many of our thought leaders like Jeremy and uh, Seth and many others are basically giving up. And the problem is, is they've kind of been chasing the shadows on the wall. They really haven't delved in to figure out what's the underlining thing that is causing all of this. They are basically, um, they can't see, what is the saying? They can't see the something because of something, right? Because of the something. Um, and I've got a couple drawings, and here's one of them that I that I that I put together. And I would, and if I was an artist, I would I would turn this into an art piece. But basically, what this is 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 the selfish startup, and it's what I call the selfish startup business model. The the startup is the engine that drives our one global economy. It is the engine. It is the power. It is what creates jobs. It's what creates new money and everything else. Startups basically have rampant growth early on and ultimately taper out later on the real you know the 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 you know the real money is to make be made in the startup stage very the really really good money so to succeed in a startup for the most part success equals one's ability to access closed capital networks it's your ability to who you hobnob with who do you know that's why silicon valley is this little hobnob network of folks who know each other, work together. There is always an investment bank or something nearby. You can always turn around and see someone at lunch. You know, it's very much network, network. It's very much kind of, you know, business as usual. So let's look at this picture here. What I want you to note is that all ideas start with the need for capital. You need capital to incorporate, you need capital to secure IP, and so on and so on and so on. And a lot of these things that need to happen have significant costs associated with them. Now you'll notice in this diagram here that um, on the left hand side, I kind of show that. Here's an idea and then you've got to go and try to raise money. And obviously if you don't have the credit, you can try to take out loans, you can try to talk to your friends and family. Um, but ultimately, there are a group of individuals who are known as accredited investors that get the ball rolling for the most part. Now, there are some success stories, and that's why I have the pre-seed startup. That's the idea to the point where you secure accredited investors, right? Um or let's say you launch a successful crowdfunding campaign. But anyone who knows or done the research, um, there's a lot of metrics in the kind of campaigns that are successful and the kinds that aren't. And for the most part, crowdfunding is only good for selling or pre-selling a product. Time and time again has been illustrated. Trying to launch an idea or something new is ex extremely hard to do. Now, ultimately, the pre-seed startup, the figure I have is 99.97% fail because we do know that 99% of business models or business plans do not get funded. So if 99% of business plans don't get funded, I pretty much uh, made the assertion that there's probably you know, an additional 0.97% of those that are, or, or ideas that don't have a business plan. So to give you an idea of where I got that number from, it's based on actual figures that are out there. So when I say a pre-seed startup, I mean any kind of idea, uh, maybe an idea for business, it may be uh, something part of a hackathon, a startup weekend or whatever, these ideas are not incorporated. There are a group of people coming together to try to do something. And the simple fact is, it's a massive bottleneck. And I want you to imagine that also at the top there is all the resources from our natural planet, which is basically siphoning through and down this hourglass. And ultimately, some of them, very few of them, let's say 
um, you know, I don't know, 0.03% of them, okay, actually make it to the seed startup stage, in which we do know, and, and people talk about it, 90% of seed startups fail. And a seed startup basically is a startup which has access to closed capital networks, which I call accredited investors, um, and um, obviously they're incorporated, or they have net revenues of over 100000 whereas in the pre-seed, they have net revenues of under 100000 and no accredited investor. They have no access to capital networks. And finally, the seed startups level up, and only you know 75% of them fail. 75% of fail. We know this from VCs. They talk about it. Um, and for the most part, these fail because the market can't sustain them, or they basically take an early exit and they're sold, or or just you know um, they're not meeting the CAGR requirements. And CAGR is compounded annual growth rate requirements of the investors behind it, and the thing is shut down, sold off you know, or liquidated, and they're considered failures. Basically what we're doing is taking all the resources in our planet and putting them through this hourglass and turning them into this intangible called money at the cost, at a massive cost. And it's because this entire system that we have is built on something called compounded annual growth rate. And compounded annual growth rate, or CAGR, is the idea that our planet is infinite, basically. It says that, you know, that, that business ideas should have an exponential growth at the cost, you know, without any concern um, to the fact that our planet is a finite resource. So, looking at the hourglass again, just remember that that's our planet up there. And ultimately, where we're headed for is this.